record to the computer. Gonna record to the computer. I could have been a singer, Max. I wanted to be like little Richard. Thank God you're not. No, 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 no. Uh, it would have been great because, you know, when like little Richard, he did that, woo, like the really high, woo. You know, I can't do it. If I could do it, that's literally how I'd start every morning. <laughs> <laughs> How's I have pancakes? a chicken. I know, I know. Look at that coffee, man. That's I such have a, a chicken. And Tell me, what? What were they smoking when they said, when, when they put these as uh, tasting notes? Uh, Am I what, French toast on a summer morning. Look, I think it's more of a metaphor for how you feel rather than what it tastes like. Mm. Yeah, but most of the tasting notes anyway are, are something like this. Like, oh, really? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because I, I, I couldn't taste anything like what it said. I just it was a nice espresso. I was good. Aha, it does a, a espresso. I'm not sure about it. But it does smell bready to me. It like smells ba- bready. Ba- That's what I want out of my coffee. A bready smelling coffee. Ba- bakery bready. But it doesn't taste like it. I'm, I'm, I'm drinking it at the moment. It doesn't taste like it. Slurp a little bit here for us. I go again. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. <coughs> If you haven't got some through your nose, you haven't done it right. <laughs> I'm okay. What are you, okay, so we're talking about the Darkwoods coffee. The Darkwoods, uh, I had it a while ago. I, I What is it again? Hold it up again so I can read it out to the it's listeners. Chicken. No, it's not called chicken the chicken, co- though. It's called the Good Morning Sunshine, and it's in bright yellow, and it's won two taste awards. Yes. So, you know, you don't know better than the judges, chicken. Max. They, they, it's they, they chicken. It's brilliant. <laughs> and it's got a... Uh, something like that. Uh, it's got a little it's got a little tassel a little hook yeah, you know so that's so you can carry it around with you like a little handbag yeah I, I, you know I you can go brilliant. around the streets you can walk around with it hanging off of your hand and anytime you feel like you know what i'm just going to pop in and have an espresso i'll walk into a shop i'll give them the beans they'll grind them for me i'm sure that'll go down well yeah 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 absolutely <laughs> it's a bit like no, it's a bit like you pay actually, corkage right you pay to... corkage in australia mm-hmm everywhere even in italy oh yeah you can you can bring your own wine if you want yeah bring your own the, food to the restaurant i never really quite understood that you know? the wine yes the food no the food is frowned upon <laughs> I, bring, yeah, I, i brought my own fish uh thank you um yeah, sure can, can i eat there <laughs> i'm yeah, gonna take that I table some there. fish and chips i just like to sit down at your restaurant how much is the corkage yeah that that's gonna go down well um You know, this, this, this is really nice. And also, you're, to, you're not supposed to go out with, um, with just a coffee. You have these, and it's, it's going to hang on one side of your belt. Yeah. On the other side, you have your hand grinder. Oh, you know, you know what it is? When I was a kid, uh, I, all the hipsters used to have things they hung off their belt, like keys. And, Nick, let, uh, let's face it. When you were a kid, there were no hipsters. Well, they were the hipsters of the time. I don't know what you called them. Just they were cool kids. Boomers. They had slightly greasy jeans <laughs> and they had like little keychains off the side and they always had a Leatherman or whatever we had instead of Leatherman. We didn't have, we're not in America. We didn't have Leatherman. We had like, you'd have like a pen knife on one hip yeah. and you'd have like a thing of keys hanging off your other and your jeans would always be a little bit greasy. So now the modern day hipster is walking around. He's got a bag of espresso hanging mm-hmm. off of one side. Which actually, actually, if you read it properly, Oh, I, I didn't actually read it at all. I didn't even <laughs> open that. It says, oh. our beans are best suited for pour over in cafeteria and aeropress. Ah. So it does not mention espresso at all whatsoever. Yeah, but that goes in. That's totally, <laughs> look, um, that's totally in line with the way that we do all. I do all my shopping. I don't look at anything because uh, I don't want to be fooled by those marketing people no. trying to sell me stuff. No. Why, marketing why? cleverness. Yeah. I know what I know what a good espresso is, and it's <laughs> and it's beans that have been roasted for a cafeteria. Exactly. And uh, uh, in, for for the cafeteria, actually, these do a really good job. No, for, not for the cafeteria, for the pour over. Really, I haven't yeah. done them in. Cafeteria. I thought you know what that would have looked. I should have tried it in a mocha pot. I want to try them on a mocha pot, and I haven't yet. Mm. But uh, mm. that's the next. Actually, uh, you mentioning that whole thing has reminded me that I've got to talk to you about something that I can't share with the channel. So I'm just going to, I'm going to cut 
right here and just tell you something because we're going to do something for next week and I, I'm, I'm going to tell you and I'm oh I can pause recording all right you got that Max wow that was a great idea yeah don't tell anybody <laughs> no, uh, no, no no hopefully we'll be ready to share that next week and um but of course you know we might not because I, I just yes those but I, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to <clears throat> to entertain the viewers a little longer <laughs> look yeah. at this look i know it's at this. look at the, how the yellow, yellow it is. It's, it's so yellow it's, it's a yellowest so yellow. bag it's, you've never seen a yellow coffee it's, bag like that it's brilliant brilliant it's yellow the dark woods coffee um, <laughs> it's actually really really good I, I'm try really... it in a try it as they say as in a cafeteria or or whatever else i, don't, I am having Walk it apart. as a pour over i'm uh, pour i'm over. I've, I've been doing pour overs a lot recently <gasps> have you heard the news about pour what? overs the big no. pour over news no uh yeah harry i've got a new uh, i've got a new v60 thing that it's not a, you can't buy it yet it's uh only available in korea and japan i believe oh that's useful yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh but it'll come over here like they're trying it over there for us to launch because i think they're a japanese company right they're japanese yes yeah they've got a new pour over let me look it up right now uh hario v if i should if you look up hario v60 it'll come up with something else mm. if I, but if i look up hario v60 into the google and then i go into news uh hario it's has free. just launched a brand new brewer the the ow60 there it is it's a w60 of course so it's We've like done the v's two v60s but <laughs> at 90 degrees uh, yeah and, that's it that's yeah. how they've done it yeah. uh no they've um but they've, is it 90 degrees 60 degrees or 120 degrees because that's very important uh i've no idea look it's got a double filtration system double filtration system. i'm not convinced by this because they've said look it's a bit like the whole razor blade things you know where where you know the razor blade companies all sat down one day and they said look we're all the same we can't differentiate ourselves what can we do and after a a weekend away at one of those camps where you do a like a you know brainstorming a camp uh, yeah. they said well why don't we just do two blades and they went genius fantastic and that yeah. will lasted a few years and then everybody was doing two blades and they, they had another little you know away day and they had another brainstorming session and they just mm -hmm. came up and they said i've got it i've got it it's completely unique no one's going to do this three blades right three and this has yeah. gone on for years and we're now up to i don't know 16 blades or something in your razor <laughs> blade yeah, no. At the moment, I think they ha you can have uh, uh, six blades. It's, the, <laughs> it's, it's just five on one side. Where will it end? Side. It's never going to end. There right? is a there is there was a projection a few years ago. If they kept adding blades at the, at the same uh, at the same pace, by twenty twenty five we would have about thirty five blades in a in a razor blade. But we don't. Yeah, yeah, and you know, yeah, it'll be. I don't know. 35 blades i can imagine I can also imagine. because if you keep adding blades i mean the, at the moment if i shave my cheek i also shaved the three neighbors down uh, cheeks which yeah, exactly yeah, well you just, know people 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 can make criticize those those companies uh marketing or whatever departments and say look you're obviously not very imaginative i think just the opposite i'm gonna take a contrarian position and say i actually think they're geniuses because nowhere else uh, would a company continue employing somebody for this many years who literally just comes up with every few years. You can imagine him. He sits down at his desk every day, his feet are up at the desk, he's reading the paper, he's doing his Facebook. And every few years uh, they say, our Smithers, uh, we, uh, we need, we, we, our sales are dipping, we need, we need more ideas. What, what have you come up with? He says, well, I've been working on something for a while now, sir. I think I might have it ready in the next six months. And he comes up, he basically just adds another blade and they go, God, you're a genius. And they yep. give him a pay rise and a promotion, <laughs> takes a limo home. Mm -hmm. uh, I want that job. So anyway, listen, going back to this, going back to this, uh, I could really do that well, you know, do nothing. I, do I can do nothing to... well. Nobody can do nothing like I can do nothing, Max. Hmm, I don't know. I think I'm a match for that. Okay. Well, we could have a bit of a nothing competition. Uh, we yeah. could do a podcast where we do nothing. Yeah. We sit here and literally now. we just do nothing, right? We're kind of doing that right now. <laughs> we do no listen um uh let me tell you what it is why why we made the whole razor blade analogy is because it's got a uh it's got a double filtration system now i am particularly i'm uh, not going to this is not a podcast I didn't even blink this. yet yeah um but i was talking so no one could see you because i would be the one <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> you spoiled my nothingness i blew your moment uh you see once again i come out the winner uh, oh, you were doing something, so you so, lost nothing. 
<laughs> well, I don't know. People could argue with that. I mean, basically, I'm just rambling on. Um, the ability okay. to talk yeah. without saying anything. That is a skill in itself, my friend. Yeah, you could be a politician. I, well, exactly. Um, but I, yeah. Uh, so listen, the double filtration so, system. Filtration. This, this yes. has a mesh filter, uh, which a combined... Uh, wait, it's got a brewing on top of the mesh can you filter. Can show your screen so we, we actually can show it? can show uh, what you're talking I'd, about. No, I don't want to spend that much time on it. It's basically, it's got a double filtration system. It's got, it's, right. it, hand, it handles paper filters as well as a custom designed flat bottom resin mesh filter. And here's the thing, Max, here's the thing. thing. Mm -hmm. I've tried mesh filters um, oh. on a V60 and I didn't like them. They're very fast. They don't, they're not, they're not as clean. Well, yeah, of course, because physics, you have, holes and the fines go through it yeah you know, but you normally get a higher um uh i have it a higher reading on the refractometer because you have particles suspended right well that doesn't mean anything tds no, your doesn't. tds your total dissolved I solids does not tedious. mean how it's, t it's tedious your tds and tedious uh right so that's part of the news yeah but Yes. For example, I am actually curious to know what uh, resin they're using and how, uh, what kind of retention do they get in the resin for the flavor molecules because resin yeah. will act as a, as a sponge for flavors. Fascinating. Well, um, I've got an answer. I, I can tell you exactly how we, 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 we find this out, Max. You need to we jump on the plane it. to Taiwan. Uh, and, oh, yeah. And, yeah, and, I'll, I'll do that. And get there and then test it and mm -hmm. then send in your report. Yes. Uh, do not worry. Bar Talks will absolutely support you all the way uh, morally. Um, obviously, financially, that's your responsibility. But morally, we're behind you all the way. I understand. Perfect. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that first thing in the morning tomorrow. Fantastic. I'm, I'm off and I'll, I'll do the testing and, and do some extractions and see how much retention you have. <laughs> and I will check everything out. <laughs> then you'll send your report in. Yeah, I will send fantastic. my report. That's what uh, I talking do. of uh, flights, actually, my son's coming back from Malaysia. I have not seen him in years. He's been kicked out. <laughs> Probably something about not having the right visa, COVID. I don't know, uh, something oh. like that. So he's coming back on uh, May the May the something. Uh, well, I'll pick him up at the airport if I get the date right. Um, and uh, you haven't Ooh. seen the news. Well, hopefully. I look. I tell you what. I used to fly tw uh, twice a month. Uh, I used to have to fly twice a month, and there would be. And so you get used to certain dates when you're flying, and you wake up and you forget which city you're in and stuff like that. Mm. And what I used to do. There have been, I think, at three occasions when I would uh, arrive at the airport and uh, I'd go to check in and they wouldn't be able to find me. And they would go, are you sure you're flying today? And I would check and I'd be like, oh, God, no, it's tomorrow. <laughs> 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 I think three times I've been. And actually, one time I had the same lady uh, and she's like, you've done it again, Mr. Basket. You've arrived at the airport on the wrong day. Uh, <laughs> I get very confused because um, you get used to it. I always go back on the Tuesday and then for some whatever reason like now you're going back on the Thursday but in your mind it's Tuesday you get a taxi and you jump in and you oh you know, don't worry I've, I've been writing reports and uh, been writing been writing up uh, meeting minutes and um, I suddenly realized that I skipped a month <laughs> really? I lost a month you've lost a month I've lost a month wow uh, this is not scary at all coming from a scientist. No, no, it's fine. It's Keeps fine. notes yeah. for a living. I don't know. <laughs> you no, know, it could have been this chemical or that chemical. It yeah. doesn't matter. You know, no, it's all in it there now. It doesn't really matter. It's, yeah, that's. Uh... <laughs> so, <laughs> well, let's hope your boss isn't watching this. <clears throat> Actually. Um, Listen, <laughs> uh, so we've got uh, look, two other pieces of news. Well, she's one, but I'm going to make it two. And mm. then we'll, we'll talk about the, um, the, the Sage Barista Touch. All right. So, Salami slicing. Yeah. Yeah. But it is a little bit like that. So uh, um, I just want to say, just want to plug. Uh, we did a couple of interviews. Um, one has been really popular. It was obviously the Lamazoka one. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you jump onto our, onto our Instagram-y thing, um, a lot of people have, have seen that. But uh, yeah, Lamazoka, we did the interview with uh, Stefano. 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 
uh, <laughs> who's the product designer at Lemazoco and really interesting interview. So go check that out on the Bar Talks interview channel, which is kind of like the YouTube channel, but it says interviews or something. And then there is, and then there's another one going out at the same time this is going out, which is uh, with the CEO of uh, Pharma Connect. So if you go down, uh, go right, go right now, Max. We'll wait for you. Go down to the Waitrose or or a Cardo, whatever's nearby you. Mm-hmm. Actually, a Cardo, you can't go down because it's online. You go to the Cardo, Max. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the Cardo. Right there, you'll out. find it eventually. Uh, and <laughs> if you get the uh, there's, there's like some like orangutan coffee. You may have seen it in the shops there, orangutan coffee. Uh, and on the back, they have barcodes, not barcodes, that's old fashioned. They have QR codes, right? And I think they do this with Starbucks as well, a number of different companies. Anyway, you scan the, the QR code and it comes, it takes you to the web page, like for designed for mobile, obviously. And it, um, and it tells you all about that coffee where it's come from so it's traced all the way back to the farmer and uh, they use the blockchain of course to do to do all of this and um but it's actually kind of interesting i forgot what blockchain is but that's okay you don't need to know really it's exactly. just what it is is it's a technology that is is what we call non-repudiable which means that you 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 can't really fake it you can't you can't commit fraud with the blockchain uh, it's mathematically you can mathematically prove that the transactions happen. So it's good for sort of contracts and things like that. But it's also good for proving the providence of something. Mm. So if, if you say these beans came from this farmer, you can actually evidence that those beans all the way through the supply chain, um, hence block chain, all the way through, you can say, yeah, actually, we can trace every single step of that in a way that is mathematically irrefutable back to that farmer. And okay. uh, why that's important, of course, is because you want to support the smallholder farmers mm-hmm. and because you want to know that these beans that they say are great quality that have been grown at 1200 meters above sea level, um, you know, in the, you know, this amazing looking place in Honduras or something, you want to go, wow, that's really great. That's where my beans have come from. I'm really feeling it. Well, you know, maybe it did, maybe it didn't. In the <clears> past, <throat> a lot of stuff was all kind of put, put together, grouped together, at cooperatives and things. And you yeah. really know. I come from a country that produces about, um, I don't know, 2,000 tons of olive oil and exports 3,000. <laughs> yeah. So take a look at the Manuka honey market. Um, there's only a very small amount of Manuka honey produced every year, uh, but there's something like a thousand times that sold every year. How can that be, Max? How can that be? Mm. Um, Chinese love that. Uh, so, uh, so anyway, so that's what he does. And uh, they also have like a, a wallet for the farmer. So the farmer can now also show that they've sold their beans and their beans have made money and the farmer gets some connection with who's buying their beans and how much they sold for and everything else. Mm-hmm. And you can tip the farmer directly. And again, because of that blockchain, you can actually be sure that the money that you put in goes mm-hmm. directly to the wallet on his phone. And that means that he can go and he can use that money. But more importantly, he can also evidence to um, local banks, whatever, that lend to small businesses that he's actually making sales because these people don't have bookkeepers and accountants and computer systems. He can go and say, look, I grow coffee and I make this money and here's my wallet that shows how much money I'm making from it. And he can get credit on that basis, which will help him produce next year's harvest. So I've got that interview coming out same time as this with... Um, Michael Chrisman, uh, he used to be at Kraft Foods and things. He's a very interesting guy, very knowledgeable. Um, so check those out. Mm. There's the news. And that was the news. That was the news. Actually, I need some news. Uh, or maybe you could just say that each time. Uh, you can practice off, offline. Uh, so, totally Sage... Do that. <laughs> <laughs> Sage so, 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 so let's open with these. Um, uh-huh. so everyone... I'm going to, to, to out Nick a little bit here. No, don't do Nick, it. Yes, Nick has oh, a coffee don't. machine problem. Oh, okay, this thing. We oh, should people know him. that. We no. should help him. He's got way too many coffee machines. <laughs> mm. More than he can count. Mm. Well, um, I mean, they're, they're slowly going, for various reasons. They are slowly going. Uh, but actually, I'm going to be buying more stuff. 
Um, oh, good. So good of them. But I'm going to be buying, I'm going to buy a hand grinder. I've committed myself to buying Aha. a hand grinder. Aha. Aha. Did you try something that you like? <laughs> yeah, because I, I've realized now part of it is like I am, uh, I want to make, I want to make uh, pour overs sometimes. Mm. But here's the problem. We only have two grinders. <laughs> <laughs> and my grinder, so my giant espresso grinder, which is, oh, I've actually got that. I was tidying up and I've got the manual right here. I actually oh, wow. Look at remember. That. What it is, I was about to even, you know, I'm so glad I pulled it out because I was about to actually get it wrong. Uh, it's a Eureka uh, Zenith or Olympus E. Uh, I think it's the 65 or the 75 mil burr flat burr. Anyway, it's a big old thing for a coffee shop, really. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing of it, it's got retention in there. It does have a fair amount of retention. I, have to, I love the espresso it makes, but it does have a fair amount of retention. And so when I go in there and I think to myself, ah, you know, I'll make a pour over. Uh, and, I, and I need to make sort of pour overs for the kind of coffees that uh, Gareth sends us from Carvetti in, that, in the Patreon thing. Mm -hmm. uh, because obviously we're, we're, you know, you're not making espressos with those um, unless I do. But don't tell Gareth. So, I unless do. someone has. Unless I do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I take I everything. Have. I make espresso with it. You know, <laughs> I take salami. I put salami <laughs> through the grinder. I make an espresso with that. Um, <laughs> mm. It's very meaty, very meaty. If you can, yeah, I think you can almost make espresso with everything. I think anything can go into the espresso machine. Um, but well, anyway, yes. the problem is, so that big grinder uh, has retention. So I've got it all set up and I've got it dialed in and I'm making my espresso and I am loath to, to, to mess with it. I'd have to clean it, put the new beans through, change the grind settings, make my one coffee, put it all uh -huh. back clean it out. I can't be bothered. So, but I've got the second grinder, which is a conical burr, perfect for it, except my wife's taking it over and she doesn't like any of the beans that I buy. She only likes the really, really cheap beans from, you know, Waitrose. And also that has a fair amount of retention. No, it doesn't. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a conical burr. It's, eh. Come on. It's all right. Yeah. It's, a, it's a sage... Um, I don't know what it's called. Is it it's the Brista Pro? Is that what it's called? No. No. Sage Pro, Grind, Grind Pro. Everyone knows the one I'm talking about. Yeah, th that one still has retention. I mean, you can, you okay. can have, uh, you, you, you can have the, the, the one in the Gaja Paros. It's, it's a conical bird grinder. Very good, very good conical birds. Yeah. Uh, it's got loads of retention. If you yeah. clean it up, you can actually make an espresso with with the retention stuff that's in there. Hey Max, do you get do you get retention on the hand grinders? What, does how does that uh, work? Hardly ever because you you actually dismantle it and you you clean it off. So you 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 get it away from it. Yeah. How long does it take to clean one of those things? To, to clean the bottom of it. Well, I mean, you so you grind your coffee. Do you clean it after each after each use or? Yeah. yeah? No, I, I I just take the the stuff. Outside, you don't you don't have a lot of retention inside the the, the birds. Yeah, that you clean it once a week. Uh huh. You take it apart, you clean it. But the problem in that is that you have to recalibrate it. After a while, you get used to it and it's it's easy. Mm. But normally, what you do is you you take it, you, you grind your coffee, goes into the the collection pot. Yeah. And you will have some coffee that is stuck to your um. To the bottom of the birds so right that you just uh, clean it off with a with a brush yeah okay all right so that, that well, takes right. about five seconds i'm sort of becoming really interested in cleaning stuff i i, I really enjoy cleaning things um, um so. if you want to come over i have a house to clean no i like enjoying cleaning my own things i take a oh. pride in it i i, I hate cleaning <laughs> anyone else's things um but uh yeah i've i've is it Just, because you have a big shiny metal box now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I spent ages this morning cleaning it, and that was so satisfying. Uh, you know, it's only satisfying if it comes clean. If it doesn't come clean, it's hor it's horrifying, and then then it becomes a real chore. Mm -hmm. uh, but I because I clean every single week. I mean, I take air, I strip it apart, I open up the drip tray, I clean the inside of the drip tray. I don't just wash it out. I mean, I clean, I polish the inside of the drip tray. And, and you had it for how long? Uh, a month, now is it? Uh, it's still honeymoon period. 
Yeah. No, I think I, but I enjoy it because I listen to my audio books. Well, and it's an excuse. Really, it's like it's like ironing. Uh, ironing is uh, is an excuse for me to to watch TV. Um, and I, yeah, that's not environmentally friendly, you know. Uh, I'm afraid, you know, I'm a lost cause. I'm from that. I'm from that era where we, you know, we drove three liter cars. Um, actually, I would love to get an electric motorbike, uh, but let's not go there. Come on, no. let's talk about the Sage know, Barista Pro. <laughs> <laughs> Sage Barista Pro. Anyway, yeah. So here's how we're going to play this. You're going to hate on it all over, and yes. then I'm going to I'm going to uh, offer a, a I'm going to offer a, a, a use case. But I, I have got a couple of points about it that I that I I think um I think are, are I don't like, mm. but there's a couple definitely a couple of points I don't like. But I think it has got a I think it has got a use case. Mm. So you want to go first? I used to act. Okay. All right, so um, the Sage Barista, actually, what, sorry, what did I say? Sage Barista Pro? I lied once again. Ah, it's a Sage Barista Touch. It's a touch. Can you go back and edit that, Max? <clears throat> Just make that. Uh, yeah, let me. Is it done? Great. Uh, Sage Barista Touch. Um, so this is, this is kind of like, so this is an all-in-one machine with a grinder, you know, with the espresso thing in it, but it's got a touch screen. And the touch screen walks you through how to make the different drinks. It's got the automatic steam wandy thing in there. Um, so you've got, um, you basically got everything that you need in one package to make most coffees. Uh, so how is it? What's good about it? What's not good about it? Uh, well, I took it out of the box and um, my first thoughts were it's actually smaller than I thought, but it didn't feel flimsy except for the drip tray, which always feels flimsy from these things. Not as flimsy mm -hmm. as the Bambino Plus, which is like the worst drip tray ever invented by mankind. <laughs> um, but this is a, uh, but yeah, it's still a little bit flimsy. The top plate of it is a bit flimsy, mm -hmm. uh, but it is quite compact, quite heavy, you know, I mean, not, un, you know, but quite heavy, which just shows that it's got some proper, proper, you well, know, it materials has an in integrated there. grinder, doesn't it? It's got an integrated grinder on the top. It is, no but again, it's heavy. It's, it's, I, I like to, what I like about it is that it in one small package that looks neat on your countertop for a lot of people like the looks of these machines. Mm -hmm. um, I actually quite do as well. Um, it's a, it's a nice utensil fits in with pretty much any, any kitchen scheme and, um, and it looks good. Uh, and, uh, the, a lot of the features about it are really well thought through. Let me give an example, mm -hmm. pull out the drip tray. And behind it is a little place where you can store all of your spare bits and pieces, you know, your blanking plates and things like that for mm -hmm. cleaning your coffee machine. Uh, I like the fact that um, the water <clears throat> in the back, um, you can either pour water in directly, like it, the top opens up, you can pour mm -hmm. it in, or it comes right out very easily. You don't fiddle with getting it back in again. It goes, it snaps into place really nicely. There's no leaking. Um, the whole thing feels quite compact, quite on point, uh, really. Um, it's it's quite, uh, the, the, the touch and feel of the materials is not bad. The little button, there's a little wheel on the left where you control the um, your jog dial, where you control the grind setting. That's the only one that feels a little bit a little bit wobbly it's not really nice to touch but the rest of it it feels pretty pretty good premium uh, premium materials um but uh what i and what i don't like about it actually having said one last thing the steam wand um goes into two positions which i actually really really like for for that type of machine right so the two the reason it goes into two positions is because when it's it's um, up, you can go, it goes into manual mode mm -hmm. and then you can steam manually to push a button and steam as you'd like. Mm -hmm. And when it's down, if you've been, it, you can either steam with it so with a jug on the drip tray, the steam water is in the down position. It then knows I'm in automatic steam milk mode okay. and it will automatically, you push the steam button and it will steam to the settings that you have set, how much froth, the right heat, everything else. Mm -hmm. And it just works. It works actually pretty well uh, then when you pull it up to take the milk jug out and you put the steam one back it auto purges mm -hmm. and so they've got lots of nice little touches in there where they've thought these things through um so i like that about it that's my first thoughts on it mm. 
I'm going to tell you about using it in a minute, but but that's just in terms of in terms of how it's positioned, like the the overall um, uh, quality of the package. That's that's what I think. Yeah. Now, what grinds me is uh, is that it's actually the same exact concept was brought up by Gadja in about in uh, 1990, I think, with the yeah. Paris, mm -hmm. with the Gadja Paris. You have a nice looking machine. Uh, very futuristic looking or at least very unusual uh, because you have um, a machine suspended on four pillars and a lot of empty space underneath you have a very capable uh, conical burr grinder on one side that is uh, obviously it, for the time it was it was advanced so you have a, a timed uh, grinder you, you have a lever you can select one or two um, doses for the grind, you put your portafilter underneath. You have actually the, the, the place that holds it. Mm -hmm. Grind your coffee into, into your portafilter. You have your tapping thing that's absolutely useless. <laughs> and then you, 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 you press your coffee, put your coffee in, and get your espresso. It doesn't have the features, obviously, the, of, the, of the Sage, but the concept, per se, of an all all-in-one, it's not new, really. Does it have to be new? No, but uh, if it's not new, then then I don't see the point of uh, acting as if they reinvented the wheel and were they, oh, this is the the next big thing. Ah, but you're people, just you're just a Gaggia fanboy, my friend. Uh, it's not like being a Gaggia fan fanboy is um, is about the users actually. That oh, this is brilliant. Well, it's not really a new thing. <laughs> Oh, but and, they've done it very differently. Look, they've done the touch screen. They've done the, well, of the, course, the, the touch automatic screen. foaming what of was, the milk. What kind of touch screen did you have in 1990? Yeah, but, uh, you know, they're doing it this new. They put it in there. Game Boy came up in 1990. Okay, but you look, yeah, that's like saying the Apple iPhone doesn't do anything. Go, hey, we've had phones before. What, so what's so, what's so good about the iPhone? Well, uh -huh. you know. And that's the whole point. You don't sell an iPhone with uh, with the say with the sales pitch as it's a telephone it's a mobile phone well it's not a mobile phone it's a lot more right. then i get it right well and this is kind of actually that's a great segue onto why i think this machine exists i think this machine doesn't exist for coffee enthusiasts like you and me i think it exists for people who actually are interested in coffee but do not want to make it an uh, a, a, an over consuming hobby of theirs they just want to you know touch some buttons be kept interested, but have someone guide them through it mm -hmm. without needing to constantly refer to YouTube videos or calling up some coffee friend who's going to advise them over the telephone what their grind settings should be. You know, I think it, I agree it, with that. Yeah. So this is really this is really who it's for. So let me tell you what I like and don't like about it. So I've, I've given you a bit of an overview. Um, mm -hmm. I like the automatic steam wand. Is the steam perfect and the milk perfect? No. Is it slow? Yes, it's very slow, very slow. Mm -hmm. um, but nevertheless, it works. It works surprisingly well. And for a lot of people, steaming is the most frustrating part of learning to make coffee. So that's going to take a lot of that away from them. Uh, I like how they walk you through. I mean, they do, they mm. have really spent a lot of time um, on the touch screen, on the box, on everything about this machine. They walk you through step by step from heating up the cup to changing your grind settings, to telling you when the espresso should start the pour. So after you push this button, it counts. It says, well, if I haven't started by, you know, if I start too soon, you know, before eight seconds, then you might need to grind finer. It, so it really helps educate you mm -hmm. as, to, um, as to, you know, to get a, a decent coffee out of it. Um, what else do I like about it? I, um, I actually quite like the control layouts so the when you for instance when you jog the wheel on the grind there's mm -hmm. a little lcd that moves up and down so you can see exactly where you are on the scale um uh, um yeah on the on the on the screen you can see exactly where you are on your grind settings when you're making a coffee if it's a if it's a coffee that doesn't have milk say uh, you know an americano or an espresso it has like these three sections, so three stages. 
So if there's no milk involved, the third stage is grayed out. And it says, oh, okay, you know, you're going to grind and then you're going to brew. So you're on step one. So we're going to work on the grind part. So it really takes you through step by step. I like that. Mm -hmm. What do I not like? My biggest gripes about this thing, and one of them is a major one. The biggest gripe is that the, the, the grinder, for some bizarre reason, <laughs> is set for some kind of multi-purpose operation. What I mean by that is that I have never found a use to go beyond three, a grind setting of one to three. And everything above that, so it's got 30 steps. So if you imagine 30 steps, now, what kind of drinks are you going to make with this machine? They're all going to be espresso-based. Yeah. But I can only use one to three because those are anything else than that was too coarse for making espresso. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. why? <laughs> why, Sage? You know, yes, I can now use this machine, this grinder to make a pour over. But, but is would that... you? Because it's a bit awkward to get the stuff into... Yeah, but you know, this the machine is aimed at people who are going to make the drinks that are on the menu, mm -hmm. right? And there isn't a pour over on the menu. There's only cappuccino, latte, espresso, americano. All of How do you make americano in that one? Does it just keep keep pouring? It's got a little. It's got a little willy that comes out. <laughs> it, okay, so it's got a uh, hot water. Uh, I don't want to call it a hot water spout because spout is probably giving it a bit too much credit it's um it's a, it's kind of pathetic i've got to, this is like it's a tiny little it's kind of so tiny we're talking about pistol. the 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 willy of the it's of the it's got a little oh, no it's got a little, the sage it's thing got a little, and it's and it's pathetic <laughs> it's got a very unimpressive little water thing at the back and okay. you hit hot water this is how you warm up the cup oh it's well. backwards <laughs> yeah it's at the back. It's at the back where you can't see it. And I think they put it there because they're embarrassed about it. Uh, and you put your cup in there and you hit hot water and it goes like that. And this tiny little amount of water. And after about, I don't know, three or four minutes, it would have filled up your cup. Oh, I don't know. I don't or, know. I'm saying I'm done. Or you could up. say boil a kettle. <laughs> I would boil a kettle. I would boil a kettle, I'd have to say. Uh, very unimpressive uh, hot water spout feature, um, which was again, I, I suppose, a bit a bit surprising. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, so hearing a, a lot of hot water for these coffee machines is never a good idea. Yeah, yeah, I know. I remember you saying that before. Um, but let me finish this. So what I what I so what I uh, what else do I I like or not like about the machine? What so I don't, don't like what you don't like. Yeah. Okay. What do I don't like? So I don't like, I don't like the, the hot water spout. I don't like the, the grind setting and I don't like the drip tray is a bit fiddly. Yeah. That's it really. Um, initially, initially I got very, I felt very silly. Um, I couldn't open the water tank top. Um, it's not obvious how you open the water tank top. It's kind of like you have to pull something to the point where you think you'd break it. If you didn't know that it was going to open, You'd, you'd be breaking it and that that and there were for some strange reason they missed the instructions on doing that so that was the thing but once you know that then it's not a big deal because now you know it and it actually works absolutely fine mm -hmm. but i tell you something else that I, I was really surprised by um and that i liked a lot was their support their support i called up their support because i couldn't open the water tank and i thought i had a broken one and uh, so I called them up. So obviously something that completely silly, right? Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You're an idiot. You can't open the water tank, you know, can't take the top off. Um, and the, the key metric, the key thing to look for here in the support person is someone who's not going to make you feel stupid. Someone who's going to make you feel like it's totally okay. And that's a very common thing. And it, it's totally their fault. And that's how she did it. She was very, very, she was very um, methodical. She obviously had a computer system where she could look it up. She said, what's your model, sir? I told her it's the Sage Barista Touch. She went, and she went, I've got that in front of me now. Okay, um, have you taken the thing out the back? I said, yeah, I've taken the thing out the back. Okay, have you done this, da, da, da? Okay, grab the edge of it and pull up. I said, what do you mean the edge? She said, yeah, grab that. I know it doesn't, I, grab the edge, pull it up. I know it's a little bit hard, but pull that up. And I pulled, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I, okay, I get it now. It did take 15 minutes to get through to her, um, but... When I got through, it was, oh, and by the way, really annoying hold music kind of thing where they give you a message. 
and it's the same message every 30 seconds. I think it was, I think it was every 15 seconds or something. So I was wanting to, you know, shoot myself in the head. But their you support could have was good. The, the, the top on uh, yourself. Yeah. And just go, oh, oh, actually it worked. <laughs> can you imagine, right? Can you imagine getting that kind Sometimes. of support from another coughing manufacturer? No, because it's expensive to have And it. that's the other thing actually is because that's what you're paying for. I think it's too expensive for um a thousand pounds if you go back a thousand pounds. thousand pounds i think i paid a little bit I less than that i think i paid thousand. 940 pounds for it oh, oh wow again yeah a thousand so pounds. yeah so a thousand pounds now you know you could say oh but nick you're getting a grinder with that as well you can and get you... the last potentiality with it Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but look, I had a reason to get this. So, um, so I, I uh, you get a, a grinder in the machine with the support. Um, the support's very, very good. For that money, you'd expect the support to be very good. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, and this is kind of where I'm saying about the positioning for it, there's not many companies that are making a total solution like that with a touch screen and everything else that walks you through, where they put that much time into helping guide you step by step all the way through True. backed up with the support that that i think for that particular target market i won't say they've nailed it because i think the grind setting is very confusing mm -hmm. um i think also the touch screen's a little bit eh, it's a little bit mushy to use which isn't great i mean the, you know i'm in a year or two's time the next version the next iteration will, will no doubt have a better more responsive touch screen. And they probably um, use a TFT touch screen in that case because it responds better to, to heat. Yeah. And um, using a capacitive touch screen, it's probably a little over the top for that. Right. Well, if you think you're going to get like a kind of touch screen from your mobile phone, it's not like that. It's not that kind of buttery smooth experience. It's kind of a touch and drag kind of touch screen. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's uh, the TFT is the classic one that you get in, uh, in older sat navs. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit like that. That's exactly what it was like. Yeah, yeah. It's because it's it's actually more resilient. It's less uh, it's less prone to 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 faults and breakings, and uh, you you can touch it with wet hands without making a hash of it. Right, right. Yes, that's okay. That's important. So um, so that's what I think about it. I mm -hmm. think if they if they could fix the grinder. I say fix the grinder. I actually think it is broken. That the model's broken, not the grind. The grind is fine, but the the model's broken. I believe you can uh, manually do a thing where you can change the. You can get the burrs a bit closer together. Well, yeah, you um, can recalibrate it for you sure. You can recalibrate it, yeah. So you It's can actually that, do that. Yes, but, but you the, will void your warranty like that because you have to open the machine. You'd probably void your warranty, and certainly the target market they're aiming for isn't going to do that. So, yeah. kind of wanted to test it as it was. Um, Overall, for the for the for the target market it's aimed at, I think it's I think it's a clever move from Sage. I don't think they've quite nailed it on the first version. Fix the, mm. that grinder so that people aren't getting confused. Most people think, well, if, if I go zero to 30, probably around you know six or eight is going to be good for my espresso. Like you, you kind of that's what most people are thinking when I spoke to them. Actually. But I, because I'm a scientist and I calibrate things, so normally you, you want to be bang in the middle. So I would start at 15. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. The things is going to gush out, right? Yeah. It's gushing out. So it's, it's like, why do you even have that? That's just totally bananas. Then secondly, I would say just improve the touch screen a little bit if it's possible. Um, mm -hmm. That was a bit frustrating. Maybe the water spout, that's a minor thing, but, you know, it's a bit pathetic looking. Um, I would actually take it away completely. Yeah. Do you need it? Do you really yeah. need it? Yeah, no, you do. Because I oh, know we don't, but the, the target market is aimed for. The If target I'm telling market you, will have definitely a kettle because that's where they've been brewing. Oh, you mean the, the water spout, not the touch yeah. screen? Ah, oh, the water spout. spout. Yeah. That's where they've been brewing the Nescafe and up to, up to then. Yeah, it's kind of like they put it in there. It feels like they put it in there so they could say it's everything that you need. But actually, yes. you'd be better off just boiling the kettle and getting rid of it, or fixing it so that it's got something half decent. It's it, it, there's no fixing it. it. There's too much water that has to go through and has to be heated up and overnight. Oh, you know that's the point because it's got a it's got a thermocoil. It's got a thermocoil. Yeah, yeah. It's not a boiler, is it? There's not a boiler like um like a well, you know what I'm saying. It, it heats up. It's got one of those things where it, it heats 
the water um, as it goes? just in time as it goes. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have a boiler. I like I haven't pulled the thing apart. I don't think that I don't I don't think that's how the sages work. I don't think they work on a boiler, do they? And they have a term. They're, I don't know how that's not how the thermocol works. I think it goes through a you say it's a boiler, it, it goes through a it um, goes through a block a of container. aluminum that's, uh, that's heated up and it's got yeah. uh, serpentine inside and uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, transfer. It's, I think the serpentine is outside a, actually, but yeah, um, well, it depends. It's the, the in the Nespresso machines, it's inside. Uh huh. Okay, uh, you have a block of aluminum and inside you have your copper tube it's oh, i see what you're saying right it's a heat right. exchanger instead of having the 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 heat exchanger going through the um, uh, the water yeah of, of your boiler it's in a block of aluminium that's heated up that's it right yeah it's something like that it's something like that anyway it's great because it heats up in like three seconds it's not True. particularly quiet i have to say um what do you mean it's not quiet as a well i mean it goes <laughs> Well, it's sound. a vibr it's a vibrational pump. It's a, it's a vibrating pump. Yeah, yeah. So it's and then the okay. So anyway, it's not. I look. I'm you know. I compare everything now to my rocket. <laughs> um. <laughs> I get it. Um, yeah. Okay. No, I get. I get that. I think personally, I think they've um, they've put the money. I, I think when, when you when you're making a coffee machine, you have a certain amount of money that you get that, that you can play with. So you have one thousand pounds coming. Of that, you have to decide first of all what's your what's your um, uh, gain, which is probably sixty percent. So you have about four hundred pounds of stuff that you have to decide where to put it. Mm -hmm. Experiences they are expensive. Because you have your support, your app, or menu designing and things, and uh, you have um, all of the features, all of the automatic feature features, uh, all of the little valves and things, and it's all plastic inside that machine. There's a lot of plastic. Mm -hmm. uh, because of that, uh, you have all the automated functions, and then you just you make the coffee machine with, with whatever's left. Instead, I prefer a machine where you have your budget that is spent into making the machine itself. Mm. I so, totally get that. I, I I do understand that, and I and I for you and me, I totally agree. Yes, I think there is a, a market different target. For... It's it's aimed for a different target. I mean, an espresso enthusiast that uh, calls himself uh, uh, that that goes for for a sage. Really? Are you really an impressive enthusiast? Are you really wasting your time and your life trying to chase that that difficult, uh, fleeting one espresso that you get decent out of your machine once every six months? I know. I'll challenge that theory. I think you can be an espresso enthusiast, but I think it's a it's a place to start. Or well, maybe not this machine, but I think if you take a look at the 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 sort of those type of machines, the Sage. Uh, type of machines i know there's a lot of es espresso enthusiasts i've got a couple of friends i've seen some people on instagram who are posting every day their espressos they're making and they're making them on these sages i don't knock it i think what it is is it's, it's kind of like a gateway you've got to start somewhere yes right and then and then as the skills develop and as they get more if they stick with it and they, the hobby becomes addictive to them then they may well want to if they can afford it they may well want to you know step up a bit to an extent else. yes but I think it's the wrong first machine. It's the wrong entrance to the to the to the coffee machine or to the coffee to make it, making your own coffee world. It's like um, I I don't drive, but I take the taxi all the time, and I enjoy the experience. So I decide to to buy. Uh, oh, I, then I can I can go around the racetrack. I go on a racetrack and I realize, wait, I, I know nothing of this. I don't know how to drive a car. I have to re relearn everything. Okay, well, I mean, I, I look, I think some people make that choice. We, I think that it exists. I think the Sage machines, their Barista Express is mm -hmm. at a price point where I think a lot of people are very attracted to it because they get, you know, everything in that little package. Um, and it gives them some control without, without, you know, overwhelming them with so many different options. Um, this machine here, I would say it's too expensive for, for what it is. Um, if it came down to about 700 
pounds or so for the target market, given the fact that they have to do the support, support doesn't come, you know, it's, it's not cheap. They've done it well. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say 700 pounds. Yeah, sure. Uh, for that, for the, I think for 940 quid, it is expensive. It is expensive. It's, it's steep for that. You do get a grinder with it. Yeah, but I'm even taking that into account. Even taking that into account, I think 700 quid with the grinder, with the support, with the touch screen, I'd be Absolutely. like, yeah, okay, that, that makes sense. But I challenge you with that then. And um, let's say, Gadget Classic, how much is it off the shelf? 500 quid, isn't it? A grinder, half decent grinder, how much is it? Yeah, but but... But again, these people are going to get that Gaggia Classic and they're not going, they're going to mess it up. They're going to, exactly. they're going to struggle. Exactly. So you still spend a thousand pounds, give or take. Yeah. But then you have to learn. Yeah. So I understand, I totally understand what kind of machine it is and what kind of target uh, customer base it has. I just don't agree with it. Well, I just you don't agree that, that, that you, you, <laughs> what I do you don't think should think... exist instead? No, it's 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 a it's two different things. I don't think that a lot of the people, mainly the people that will go for a machine like this, would move to something where you actually have to do the, the, the work. It's if anything, they would go to the super automatic ones. I see what you're saying. I think some will, some won't. Um, yeah. but what are the options in the marketplace? Give me an alternative. Um Gaggia Carezza, Gaggia, uh, Gaggia Naviglio. Oh, man, I don't even, I've never even heard of those. They are super automatic machines. They're wow. very, very good ones. And uh, it's, uh, they, they do everything for you. They do everything yeah. except one thing, Max. They don't do the marketing because no, I've never heard of them. <laughs> so. uh, but there are a lot. There, is, uh, th- there are uh, What's their support machines. Like? Uh, oh, pff. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> no, we'll just, just, right. just move on. Hey, don't you push the button. button. <laughs> you push it at the button. Did you push the button? <laughs> okay, that's all the manual says. I can't help you. <laughs> or, uh, or you have, for example, the, the built-in machines. The, 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 there are Miele, uh, the ones that you actually put on top of your oven. Okay. The, the slot in, in your kitchen. And yeah. They look interesting. They are very automatic and uh, they make an okay espresso. But as someone called them on Facebook, they are PhD machines. All right. Standing for push here, dummy. Push here, dummy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm a dummy, but you know, uh, I'm a dummy that wants to try to make better espresso himself. Exactly. And um, a machine like that would, I don't think it would necessarily take you da- down that road because. It, it's, it works already, so you, you're not pushed to do better. That's exactly the point. So those super automatic machines, they're not for people who, who want to, to feel like they've created an espresso. They're for people who want an espresso and they don't want to think about it. Like if they could have a servant come in and make the espresso for them, that would be fine too. But for, for the people who are buying these Sage machines, they want to have... They want to be able to go and buy their beans and 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 participate and feel like they've actually created a really great espresso or cappuccino or whatever as a result of it. But um, they're maybe a little bit overwhelmed by you know by going to the advanced option first. So this is, I think, it is a gateway or a stepping stone for for some people. Mm. Yeah. But um, hey, that's okay. We're going to wrap it up because we've been talking for quite a while. I say we. Um, but possibly one we, of us. We don't want to say which one. Yeah, um, no, no. I'll take the blame, but you know. <laughs> yeah, Max, we know it's you. I, I know, I know, I know. But it's also, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So next week, with any luck, now, if next week we're not ready to make the announcement, we'll pretend like we never said this. Yes. <laughs> As we have done many times. <laughs> As, yeah, 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 exactly. Um, it just skipped this, just, yeah. Uh, but it's going to be very exciting, hopefully, and uh, we'll be ready. And um, yeah, I can't wait to tell people about it. It'll be something pretty cool. Yeah. So tune in next week. And uh, it's a beautiful day outside. Max, I don't know why you're inside. Uh, get out I'm there. I'm going out. Do it, buddy. Chicken. <laughs> Take your coffee with you. Don't forget to attach that to your belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with... 
whatever. <laughs> it's just a little accessory. Like, uh, you can have your like porta filter hanging off there as well. You could go out there. You could have like a whole little chain, your porta filter, your tamper, and your espresso bag hanging off your belt. You know what? You should also attach your coffee machine with it. And and in your backpack, uh, a diesel generator to run the coffee machine. Okay. <laughs> All right, my friend, you have a great uh, rest of the weekend and you I'll too. talk to you next week.